Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I think you guys know by now if you've watched the show for a while that I love talking about feminism, specifically about its pitfalls and how it is actually harmful for women and men, in my opinion. And so today we're going to talk about it even more. I'm going to do a reaction to a Jubilee a Middle Ground video, and I'm very excited. Before we get into it, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Alrighty, so this Middle Ground episode is male feminists and female anti -feminists which I think is such a good group and I'm very excited because it's an interesting dynamic when it's men saying no you're oppressed like we want to uplift you and women saying no I actually don't like it. I just think it'll be really really interesting there's more world leaders who are male and typically I think good, leadership that's a good thing women should not be positions of extreme leadership like presidents etc etc because we're too emotional I'm feeling a lot of emotions right now Amala's in this. That's great. Amala Ekonomi from Prager You. You guys should go watch her. Women have more privileges today than men. Absolutely agree. I mean, just the first thing I think of, number one, women control access to sex. That is a huge privilege, like above men. But also with jobs these days, applying for jobs, there are all of these diversity quotas and that includes gender. Oh, I need, you know, I need a woman in this role. We need to hire a woman. Oh, if we, you know, if they have the choice between a man and a woman, they are obviously going to pick the woman because that means they get to say, mm, we just hired a female VP. That's privilege, that is. Also the Me Too movement, I mean, come on, believe all women, men don't get that. With this new feminist movement that is arising more of the third, fourth wave, we are finding, I think that women are placed and pedestalized above men in a lot of ways. That's good. Uh, it's because we've been taught that women are still victims, that we are still oppressed. And so as a result, women are now in this protected class. Now they are not as protected as some of the other intersectional levels of women or, you know, those communities. I think her saying that women are put on a pedestal is a really good way to put it. It's not that we're naturally dominant over men. No, it's that like we have been pushed up here because, oh no, we need to help women. It's like, really? Hiring and scholarships where women sometimes even regardless of academic standing or achievement are prioritized. From the time they are little, girls are always like doted on and, and you're so pretty and cute, very coddled. Yes, I do think that women, you know, that they're feminine nature should be nurtured. I think that that should be, you know, supported and celebrated for a lot of women. But I do not agree that women should be coddled. That is something that really peeves me when parents treat their daughters and sons' intelligence differently. Growing up, I remember watching, you know, parents of my friends go like, oh, she's just a silly little girl. Oh, it's okay, because she's just a girl. Oh, she's just being like, no. It's so stupid. And I think it sets women up for failure. And it also teaches them that they have this privilege basically and that they can walk around and be like, oh, I'm just ditzy and need to use this. But that, it just pisses me off. And that is one thing that I think my mother was so great about because I have three older brothers and we were not raised differently in that way. Like she never let any of that slide. If I ever pulled anything that, you know, was in the vein of, oh, I'm just being silly. I know I can, I can excuse this because I'm a girl and I'm so silly. I mean, she immediately caught on to it. It was like, absolutely the frick not. Now women don't have to like work to get a guy. They're just hot. And then they get guys come to them and spend their resources on them. Again, that is the controlling access to sex. People usually think that men are the ones sexually dominating women. But if you think about it, a man really wants to get out there, wants to be sowing the seeds but it's the women who get to decide whether that actually happens. In normal society, women do control it. I appreciated the distinction of more versus different privileges. You can't just use a broad brush. And that's where we start to get into the idea of like intersectionality, where... Already. What are we? I'm two minutes into this and you're already preaching to me about intersectional. Okay, that's where we get into the situation where feminism means everything and literally nothing at all. Because when you add intersectionality into the mix, you can basically say that feminism is all things. And then if you try to get a definition out of them, they don't have one. It's like this just muddles the conversation. If it was a trans woman, if it was a woman of color, if it was but a woman who was- I don't think we're was... including trans women into- <laughs> And I think we definitely level. should. I don't like, think we should. I say that, that, yes, there are some privileges that women have that men don't. But also there's privileges that men have that women don't. I don't think women are more privileged in our society because I could get a woman pregnant and I could just run away. They can get you well, for they can't child get you for support, support, which they but do. Are you saying oh, she can't run away? Jail. <laughs> yeah. Are you saying you can't, can't she can't run money. away from the pregnancy? So there he is saying that, you know, women's natural biology inherently makes them less privileged. And that's something that really annoys me because you're saying that the thing that makes women so unique, the strongest thing about them, the fact that we are able to literally create a life, create a human, birth this human, feed them naturally, that that's a weakness. 
that that lowers our status. It's like, no wonder women don't want to have children. No wonder women are having abortions like crazy, that 99% of abortions are birth control because they don't want to have children because they've been taught that that is a weakness when it should be thought of as this incredible thing that your body can do. And this man is saying, oh yeah, well, I'm obviously, I have to be more privileged because I can't get pregnant. It's like, okay, calm down. It's like, so you're saying that you think you're better than me because of something that I can't control. And I think that that is an important point. Like Amla was saying that there are different ways that men and women are privileged, but that also goes back to being able to acknowledge that men and women are very, very different. Men and women bring very different things to the table. Men and women have very different strengths and weaknesses. And that is why we work well together. That is why it is harmony. That's why there is balance. That is why traditional marriage makes sense, a mother and a father. So he's acknowledging something that is a biological, <laughs> like evolutionary truth. And then we get into the social intersectionality, you know, how society basically artificially creates privileges. That's a totally different conversation. But I do think it is important to acknowledge on a foundational level that there are different ways that we are privileged, but still. If I was a mom, this would be kind of shocking. I disagree with the first part, but that part is an important point, but I'm already made it. woman was pregnant, she wouldn't be able to get an abortion in most in some parts states, of the country. Yes. Yeah. In some states, that's, that's, that's a major disadvantage. Well. Yeah. Oh, major disadvantage. You can't kill your child. Oh, sucks. You can't commit murder. Mm. Keep your legs closed. You can't get an abortion, but children can go get a, a gender change at 12 with a feels parent like at 15 without consent. That's not true. It feels like you're very fixated on that. Feels, feels like you're very I, fixated on that. I, I know the laws as well. I went through this. I know. In some states, you can. And in Thailand, you can go at 16 and get your everything cut off. Like I said in the beginning, we've all agreed that the beginning of feminism was going in the right humanizing direction. Humanizing women. Yeah. It right. was humanizing women. Which is very, very true. Up until a couple of years ago, I would 100% say that I am a feminist because I believed in first and second wave feminism because I want to be able to be educated. I want to be able to have a job. I want to be able to vote. I want to be able to, you know, make my voice heard. I love the fact that I can provide for myself. That's a really, really important thing. I love that I am, you know, seen as equal and apparently these days higher than men. But then we get into, you know, second, third and fourth wave feminism and it does not mean what the original feminists intended it to be. And you look back at where it started, it does they don't even... They're completely in opposite directions, if you think about it. Like, they are totally antithetical. It was giving us the same opportunities so that we can go vote, so that I can go get a job, so that I can drive a car. If you want to talk about feminism, go protect the women who get beat up for driving a car. And that's one thing that pisses me off about American. I feel like I've said, and that's one thing that pisses me off a lot when I do these reactions. But there are a lot of things that peeve me with these people's arguments. American feminists, or maybe even I should broaden that and say feminists in the West, they walk around claiming that they're so oppressed. They have all this intersectional oppression. Please think outside of your world for a hot second and look at women around the world who are, like this young woman said, beat up for driving a car, married off when they are 14 years old, who actually have no autonomy whatsoever. If you actually care about feminism, take a look outside of your bubble, get some damn perspective and realize that you actually are so much better off than so many women across the world. Does not mean that your problems in your personal life are not valid. It does not mean that people in the Western world do not struggle because obviously we have our own problems. You should have some gratitude for the rights that this country, that the Western world has afforded you because so many women are still fighting for that. I'm sorry if you're not getting my sympathy, but I truly do not care because you are not oppressed. On paper, you are not. Men are falling behind in society. I appreciate this like little jacked dude that's like, Pfft. I'm just enjoying staring at him because he just looks like... <laughs> Like Buzz Lightyear, basically. I just think, I mean, we have amazing men here today. It's oh, an honor thank to you. be on this. Interesting. Did they all walk forward for that? That's actually surprising. I know that men are not able to be men anymore. Because of the feminist, uh, modern feminist propaganda, I coach men in my practice and they tell me like, I don't even know if I, what I can do on a date anymore. Can I ask a woman out? Am I going to get in trouble for this now? Like, I really like her. I kind of want to put my hand around her waist, but... Maybe that's going to, you know, I'm going to be all over social media. I literally was reading a story on Twitter the other day and it was about, you know, some accusations and assault accusations. And there were all these comments from men saying like, this is why I don't even ask girls out anymore. This is why like I can't drink when I'm out with a girl. And, you know, this is why like I think all men should be basically wearing body cams when they go out on dates because, you know, things that you do can be twisted. Women make up stories. They lie. Shocker to all the Me Too people. Women do lie. You don't have to believe all of them. But it is sad. And I'm sure that these guys are going to say like, no, that's just individual, like anecdotal stories. But obviously there are a lot of men out there that feel that way. And I think men don't have the balls anymore to just stand up 
and be a man, be dangerous. But I do think it's wrong to say that men don't have the balls anymore to do that because they have been lied to. Number one, they've been lied to, you know, saying that, you know, masculinity is bad, but they have had women screaming at them for the last five, six, seven, eight years. It's like you women have been emasculating them. So obviously they are responding to that and going, okay, I got to do what the woman wants. I don't think that it's totally men's fault. So I wouldn't have put it that way. I feel like a lot of the reasons why men can't actively express masculinity in a positive way is because of the patriarchal structures that we have. Part of where I'm coming from with this is I'm trans. I came out socially and medically transitioned at 18. Okay. The feminist movement. Glad it was 18. And is what helped me feel empowered enough to be who I am okay. and be a man. Feminism made me empowered enough to become a man. So I'll just leave that there. There are so many theories about how feminism is basically training women into what they allegedly hate. But in this circumstance, this person actually did. I feel like the world is just changing in a way where men don't have like a natural place to fit in. That's very sad. That is very, very true. And that is not a good thing because men are confused because they have all these people yelling at them. You know, straight white men are the rot in society. A of politicians yelling about that. Like we need to get white men out of power. We need to get straight men out of power. Like obviously they're confused. Yeah, I think men are alone. I heard you throw out the word loneliness and that does feel true. I just don't think that feminism did that. I then what did it? Men fell out of place. Oh, what ha what happened? Who caused that? Who made you confused? Just think like the world is changing. He's wearing Crocs. This man is wearing Crocs with socks on in a video. You can't be trusted. What I think about with men is that high suicide rate, that likeliness so important. Uh, and proclivity towards violence and aggression. I think about loneliness. These men who are feeling disillusioned with the world right now, they are seeking out male figures. We've seen you know, the rise of the Jordan Petersons or some of the personalities at the Daily Wire or the Andrew Tates. Hello. They are seeking out somebody who's- <laughs> They did not like that. Oh, I knew that was coming. <laughs> that woman originally said like, oh, a man can't make a bunch of money Money, make millions like putting his body online and in the back of my head I was like mm, that kind of sounds like Andrew Tate to me just walking around shirtless with his Bugattis and a cigar telling men to like stand the F up I was like no I think Andrew Tate actually has made his career on that I would say Jordan Peterson's probably a more healthy role model for men than say an Andrew Tate <laughs> But men are going towards these more aggressive, masculinized traits and seeking out men that are trying to harness that for them. Because they have not had that example. Because they have had women screaming at them. Because it is feminism. And it's not just women causing that. It is, you know, men responding to feminism and then passing that on. And Amala made a great point, and I always want to make this clear. When I talk about masculinity, I'm not saying that every man needs to be super stoic and you can't feel anything. Just in general, both men and women, you need to be able to properly process your emotions. That is part of being a good functioning human being in society, a good partner in a relationship, a good daughter, a good son, a good sibling, just a good person is able to process your emotions, feel what you need to feel, and then buckle up and move on with your life so that you can be a productive member of society and keep your life afloat. Female sex workers should be more respected. That's my one response to that. This is what I mean, guys, when I say sex work only fans, you know, putting yourself on social media half naked in a bikini with your ass out for everyone to see on the Explore page. You are not pissing off the patriarchy. That is not sticking it to the man. That is not empowering you and breaking through patriarchal standards. All the people that are saying that you should be more respected are the men because they're consuming your content and they like it. Because it's men. <laughs> Should we be polite to them? Probably. That yes. That would be a human thing to do. Absolutely. I'm not saying you need to go around and shame sex workers. Should we present sex work as something that is a, you know, a great industry to go into? And should we lie to women saying that this is an amazing way to make money and be fulfilled? Absolutely not. But you can still have manners and politeness and common human decency and empathy for people and the choices that they make. I prefer um, OnlyFans over the, yeah. the traditional porn industry. Yeah, because you own you own it and then it's, yeah. it's Women a lot more, that respect put onto you that like this is your content you're putting out into the world. Yeah, now it's their copyrighted material. You actually don't own it. OnlyFans owns a huge majority of your content. When you leave their platform, they still have the rights to your content. Before when it was the old porn industry, they didn't have rights to those videos. And that's a huge thing. Like if I want to take my stuff down you have to go to a court as a with a copyright case and it just that's what happened with Mia Khalifa now she has a very successful career doing like sports commentating and stuff but that's 
Unfortunately, that's not the rule. That's the exception where but, she's been able to But it's successful. a role model. I wouldn't say it's a role model. I would not suggest any of the young women that are watching me to look up to Mia Khalifa. <laughs> when we're encouraging women to go out of their way to sell their bodies on the internet because that's a means to an end, we're not doing that the right way. And I don't think the feminist movement should be moving in the direction of normalizing sex work when we should be encouraging women to value themselves, value yes. their body, value their talent, and take that elsewhere. Yes, because originally feminism was about making sure that women had autonomy and that they were not objectified. Now modern day feminism is saying, no, go objectify yourself. If you are objectifying yourself, it's okay. If you are making yourself an object for a man, that is okay. But they are ignoring the fact that you are still being objectified. It doesn't matter who is doing the objectification, how that is all coming to be, you are still being looked at as a piece of meat and as an object. Your reputation can still be ruined. You still do not have autonomy. Even on OnlyFans, where you think you're very, very empowered, I've done multiple videos about this, it is still not a safe platform. It is still not a safe industry. This should not be something that we are flippantly just telling young women that yes, this is great. Go ahead and do it. I think I said this in a video recently, but it almost feels like starting an OnlyFans is like a rite of passage for 18 year olds. Now they're like waiting until they become 18 and then boom, they start an Only. It's so sad and it's creepy. That should not be the norm. There's obviously a need if they're in maybe a lower economic class or something. I will never say that doing sex work is a need. There always has to be something else. The other thing would be is that women are not happy when they're doing this. It's not empowering as a woman. You can go on Twitter and see these women who are in their 30s with an OnlyFans link in their bio with but with no kids, no husband, no specific thing to actually care about. Also, just look at the mental health reports of women who are sex workers across the world. The suicide rates, the dangers of that work. The porn industry is built upon sex trafficking. That keeps the sex trafficking industry running. And that happens even on OnlyFans. And OnlyFans is arguably more dangerous because they are not a quote unquote porn site. They were not created as a porn site. So they have no protections in place, even though Pornhub really doesn't have a lot. And most you know, porn production companies don't really have that in place either. I think that it's gotten better allegedly. But OnlyFans does not have any of that. You still get pimps. You still get women who are being sex trafficked. You still get minors who are being uploaded on that site without their consent after being raped, assaulted, it is not a safer site. So yes, this is a moral conversation. I think that this is an important conversation for the morality of like the fabric of our society, but also it is a safety issue. And that makes it, I think, more mainstream and more imperative that we address and discuss. You hit the nail on the head. I came from a very poor socioeconomic background. I was a product of the state. And so I speak from experience when I say it's not empowering, it's not glorifying, it's not... Um, owning your body. None of that stuff is true. No little girl when they're four or five says, I want to grow up and be a hooker. OnlyFans is the biggest pimp of them all. They're still taking 20% and your content still gets leaked a lot. Yes, they take 20%. It gets leaked. And even if you, you know, have your watermark on it, they still own part of it. People can still put it online. Like even if you delete your entire OnlyFans account, people can still repost your content, create fake accounts with you. There is just no security on that site. People have this faux sense of empowerment and, you know, owning their bodies and, you know, being so empowered, but the site itself is against all of that, does not uphold any of that. And the feminist movement, the modern feminist movement is directing women towards this and saying that this is so empowering and look at all these incredible women doing this and this is such a lucrative career path. It's so dangerous to tell young women that. And that is why I do so many episodes about this and I wanna talk about it so much because there is so much noise out there telling young women that this is a good thing. And I will be the one person if I need to be. <laughs> and I know that I'm not the only person, but if it happens that I'm the one person, I will still be talking about this because it is so, so bad. I really do love these middle ground episodes because even with the most heated discussions, and this one, you know, was not as heated, they still are able to find common ground because at the end of the day, these are just humans and they are able to connect with each other and they are able to have empathy. And a lot of these black and white issues that you see on Twitter, that you see online, that you see people debating, they are so much more nuanced than what you see on social media, than what you see portrayed by the media. And there are ways to have conversations. There are ways to find common ground. And even though many of these Jubilee videos and the cut videos, they are obviously a little bit biased. And often they pick people who I do not think are great representations of certain values. I think that they still start important conversations. And usually you see that in the comments as well, that people are, you know, kind of getting that. But the thing that I noticed in this particular comment section is that everybody hated Janelle. That was the lady in the orange dress with <laughs> huge boobs. And in that point, 
portion that I was reacting to. I mean, obviously, I don't think that she was the greatest representation of anti-feminism. I think that she made some important points, but somebody commented and pointed out, I love how the lady in the orange dress said that she refuses to do anything that alters her body, but has $50,000 worth of plastic surgery. I think it's a bit hypocritical for sure. Somebody else was saying that Janelle was an embarrassment. Everyone else was so thoughtful, level, and respectful. Again, like I love that people are able to see that this is an important conversation. She just wanted to fight with everybody about things that she didn't agree with and shift the conversation away from topic to things that she wanted to fight about. I do think that's an important point because at the beginning where she was trying to shift it into, you know, a conversation about, you know, gender affirming surgeries for kids. It's like, that's not the point. Like we can, that's an important point of discussion. We can talk about that, but that's not the real point of the video. Like, let's get back to the actual conversation. Another person was talking about her saying that I find it interesting that Daniel, the buff guy actually portrays more femininity than anybody else on that stage. That's just because he was quiet. Do you think that that is what femininity is? Just being subservient and quiet and not saying anything? I took that as that man just has nothing to say and is uncomfortable, even though he was wearing like an alpha elite shirt, which I thought was very ironic. And then they go on and they said, Janelle, as much as she believes that she is super feminine, displays a lot of masculine energy. I mean, she was very loud. She was, but still she is a woman. So inherently she's going to be more feminine than him. One woman commented and said, I think that some of these anti-feminist women are confusing female privilege with pretty privilege, which is a valid thing. A woman that is not conventionally pretty will not just get any guy she wants, LOL. She will not get treated the same as a hot woman. And maybe that is the case in dating or if you are in some kind of industry that values your looks. But again, if we're going back to affirmative action or hiring in this modern day, that is not pretty privilege. That is the privilege of being a woman. And I, I think that, you know, pretty privilege can be a real thing, but again, I think it is in specific situations and maybe they should have pointed that out more, but I don't think that their entire argument should be blown up because of that. Somebody said, so honestly, as a woman, I think it's so unfair to say that women can't be leaders like a president or something. There's nothing wrong with emotion and even men have emotion. And I agree. I don't love the just generalized statements that women, you know, should not be in positions of power. And no, you know, you can't have any female bosses. Women shouldn't vote. It's like, okay, like let's not take it that far. Even though if women weren't voting, we would have a Republican president right now. But I digress. That's not the point. I like the fact that I have the right to vote because women bring different things to the table, but that should be celebrated. Female leaders should be celebrated because they are different than men. And again, they should work with men and that should be a harmony that is celebrated. They are not any better or worse. I'm sure that there are some industries where men are better suited for those roles. I'm sure there are industries where women are more suited for those roles. But yeah, I don't think that that generalized statement is correct. Somebody said Jubilee never fails to find at least one person that is infuriating in every episode. Honestly, Janelle didn't bother me as much as the Crocs guy. And I think it was just because he was wearing Crocs. And I was like, don't speak. Just, shh, just don't. I can't take anything you're saying seriously. Somebody else said, my blood is boiling just watching. Mad kudos to these gentlemen and their patience and self-control. I would love to just sit in a room with them and bask in their energy. What? I don't know if this is a woman or a man, but if this is a woman, please calm down. These men do not want to date you. It sounds like you're just trying to flirt with them. <laughs> also, I'm guessing then that you are a feminist and that's very anti-feminist of you to try to be shutting down what women are saying. Just put for thought. Anyway, I love watching these videos. They are so fun. If there are any that I have not reacted to that you want me to see, you can always drop them in the comments and I will make sure that my team gets them to me. But I will see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the comment section. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, like this video, and of course, if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I'm Brett Cooper. See you next time.